Now, this is the key to the review, which you have access to, but I wanted to just talk through a couple points on here, okay? So, um, one, uh, you may use the unstandardized uh, distribution. In other words, you don't have to use Z-scores. Um, you're welcome to use Z-scores. They do take longer. They're fantastic, but they do take longer. Um, if you use the unstandardized version, which means you're actually using the mean and the standard deviation for the problem, make sure you, and either, even Z-scores, you're supposed to label everything. So you must label all key components, like your lower, your upper, your mean, your standard deviations. Now, as you look at these problems, I'm going to zoom in just a little bit to make it easier here, because this looks pretty small. Um, so here, I'll just go down the left side. A study of elite distance runners found body weights to be approximately normal with a mean body weight of, so there's your mean, that's, we're going to be using that the whole time. So mean body weight of 63.1 kilograms and a standard deviation of 4.2 kilograms. So again, if you're doing the drawing, you're going to draw this model right here. Uh, so it's going to be a bell curve. You make sure you label it with that 63.1 and the 4.2. And the N says you're using the normal distribution because that's pretty much mostly what I've taught you. Um, make sure you label your, in this case, what percent of weights are 60 kilograms or greater. That means you're going to shade to the right. And so you would have your marker at 60, and then you would shade here, and your answer is the area. So that's your percentage. Um, if it says percentage, it would be ideal to give the answer in percent. So 77% of the area would be appropriate. Let me see if I can edit that. Go away, annoying thing. There we go. So, 77%. That's your answer. Okay? Um, if you gave me decimal, I'd probably be a little bit lenient on this because I'm pretty sure I told all my kiddos decimal is fine. Um, but technically, it did ask for a percent. Uh, what percentage of weights are between 65 and 70? Oh, wait, let me go ahead and go over calculator notation. So <clears throat> I do want to see this probability area here if you're doing calculator notation. Here it's pretty much implied in the drawing. You, I can see which area we're talking about. Although it's still nice to have this, I'll be quite honest. So you have normal CDF. That tells me what distribution. You tell me your lower and your upper. Uh, remember, on the calculator, you're going to do 1E to the 99. Make sure you do the little blue E, not the green capital E. Well, it's, it's still capital, but it's a little one. Um, and then 99. The mean is just from our problem, 63.1, and our standard deviation is 4.2. And if you put that all in your calculator, in fact, I can go ahead and pull one up, it will basically give you 0.770. Where's my calculators? Oh, it's coming up. There we go. So let me just kind of slide this in here. This is good enough. So we go second distribution, normal CDF. And what do we say? 60 to uh, infinity. Oh. Hold on. Second distribution, normal CDF. There we go. So we're doing 60. And then we're going to infinity, so we hit the 1. Then we hit that second uh, E, -E not the green E, 99. And then, so that's positive infinity. Remember, you can have negative infinity. And the mean was 63.1. Standard deviation is 4 point something. Let me see what that was. 4.2. And boom, there's your number. All right. So you can see it's about, if you do rounding, that's why I have 0.770 is that pretty much rounds. I could have done 0.7698, so 76.98% would work as well. So that's the calculator section. Okay. And so that kind of walks you through here. These are between, so now you have a lower and an upper. Those tend to be easier because you don't have to do infinities. Um, <clears throat> By the way, if you're doing these with Staplet, let me just go ahead and pull up the Staplet. 
which is to find this first unit because the you know, some of you don't even use it, which is fine too, but I do like using it. I think it's 63.1 and 4.2 plot distribution. And for the first one, we said to the right of 60. The thing I love about Staplet and why I encourage you to use it, even though you don't get to use it on the AP exam, is if you click on the show labels on plot right here, it shows exactly what you want to do for the drawing. And see how it has the area here, it has the normal model right there, and then it shows the cutoff. I don't really need these little numbers down here. I just need these cutoffs, okay? So you, right here, it's labeled kind of like the empirical model. So you have the mean, then one standard deviation away, two and three standard deviations away. But that is not required, okay? So that's how you get those graphs. If you need between, you just click between. Um, so this one's different. What is the weight cutoff for the top 20% of renters? So this one, you don't know the cutoff values. You're trying to find the cutoff value. So first of all, I'll show that to you on the staplet. So that's basically calculating a value corresponding to an area. And we want the top, was it 20%? Yeah, top 20%. So if I put um, 20, it's going to throw up because it's going to say, uh, I have to have a, like a decimal area. So I'm going to put 0.2. All right, now it's happy. But pay attention. You've got different areas where you can put these, all right? Um, you can do right tail. Come on, there it is, right tail. You can do middle, which is central. And you can do left tail. It defaults to left tail, which, by the way, your calculator defaults to as well. So in this scenario, what are we looking at? The top 20% of runners. So make sure you do right tail because that would be right there. Um, these are weights, not time. So we're, there we go. And you can hit show labels on plot. So it shows the cutoff there, the area, and the model, which goes, which is what I have here on the key. Okay. So the cutoff, um, I have the Z, oh, I have the Z score. Oh, that's, I just gave the Z score on the side. So the actual value is 66.6. Uh, kilograms. And Q1, the only difference you're doing for Q1 or Q2 or Q3 is on here, you're setting for Q1, it would be left tail area, 0.25. Remember our Qs, when we do the, it's that area is like a 25th percentile, 75th percentile. Percentiles are all left tail areas. So you can see the Q1 is 60.27. If I was doing Q3, I could just put 0.75 in there, and that gives me Q3. And obviously, the median should be the same as the mean uh, for normal distributions, and then that's it. Okay, now if we're doing the calculator for this, how do we do the cutoffs? Well, for the calculator, we're going to do the inverse because we're going backwards, right? Second distribution. So instead of normal CDF, by the way, I never use normal PDF. So ignore that first one. We're going to use inverse norm. And if it's Q1, I want 25% of the area. Then I can put in the actual values. And since it's a percentile, it's left area. And hit enter. And there you go. Here's the values from that. So that's how to do this part. <clears throat> then <clears throat> we say, if you go over to the other side, I think, let's go do this side. Okay, so um, we'll just stick here. Um, in a group of athletes, 70% are runners and 30% are bodybuilders. What is the probability a randomly selected athlete weighs more than 72 kilograms? So the thing that you have to do is that you can do a tree, and I like trees, don't get me wrong, in fact, boom, I got a tree there, all right, and I think both of these are, uh, yeah, these are both runners, so we have the same numbers, okay, so if we're doing a tree, uh, one thing we know beforehand is the probability they're runners or bodybuilders, all right, so 
80% are runners, 20 are bodybuilders. So that doesn't depend on their weight. That is just 80% are runners and 20% are bodybuilders. Now, guessing for weights is going to change drastically if they're a runner or a bodybuilder. So um, it says, what is the probability that a randomly selected athlete weighs less than 70 kilograms over here? So what I do is the probability that a runner weighs uh, less than 70 kilograms is I have to use, let me go ahead and zoom, get this over here. I have to use the normal CDF to calculate that probability for runners. I would also calculate that probability for bodybuilders. So you can see these two lines. They're pretty much identical for both the runner and the bodybuilder, except for one thing, the mean weight and the standard deviation of the weight. So I'm going negative infinity to 70 for both of them, all right? So I'll have a, a drawing kind of like that. That's a low body weight. Um, and then put in the appropriate mean and standard deviation. And that's a probability that a runner weighs that much. And that's a probability that a bodybuilder weighs that much. Okay, so then it says, what is the probability someone in general has a low, uh, it weighs less than 70? Well, I have to take into account that 80% of my people are runners and 20% are bodybuilders, right? So I can calculate the probability um, that they weigh less, right? So that's what we did here. Yeah. So we calculated 76.74% of my athletes weigh less than 70 pounds, all right? What is the probability that the athlete is a runner given that they weigh less than 70 pounds. So we can go to this formula right here, probability of runner, given they weigh, you know, they're lighter weight, is the probability of runner and lightweight, okay, divided by probability of a runner. I mean, probability of their lightweight. So it's that second one is always the one underneath. So I pull this number down here from that 0.7674, and I pull the probability for runners, 0.76, 0.8 of the athletes are runners times the 0.950, and I get 0.76. And so my probability is 0.990. By the way, I think on this one, there's some slight variations on, no, this one's fixed. Um, on answers, I don't know why the kids, oh, it could be my slides. Um, so there might be some variation in our answers uh, in the lower decimals as you go further down. Uh, but that's kind of normal because it depends on the technique you're using. A staplet might give a slightly different answer than a calculator. So there's a little bit of slot there. But, I mean, if the answer is supposed to be 0 0.990, I shouldn't see an answer of 0 0.950 or just 0 0.9, all right? So avoid um, rounding too much when you're doing these problems. And that's pretty much it. Good luck on your quiz.